Advanced Themer is an absolute powerhouse when it comes to Bricks Builder. It adds so many good features that I can honestly tell you I can't live without it anymore on every build. Like if there's a website I'm working on that doesn't have it, I have to upload that plugin. It's that good. Now there's a ton of features. It can be overwhelming, but today I'm gonna show you just the features that I use on every site build. And at the bottom, I'll show you exactly where you can enable the feature if you wanna use it yourself. Now there's four categories of Bricks features. There are the top bar features, structure panel, classes and styles, and elements. Let's start off with the top bar. First thing we're gonna look at in the top bar is the responsive helper. Now, typically when we want to edit things at different breakpoints, we'll see if we click into these, it goes to a new breakpoint, but we can't see what's in between the two items. So with responsive helper, I can now drag and see it at any width I want. And if I go in between two of these yellow lines, it's gonna switch that breakpoint for me. So I can go here, now I'm on mobile landscape, and now I'm on mobile. And I can make any changes here while I'm in that that breakpoint instance. So you'll see the cool about this too is if I'm on my laptop, let's say, and I wanna know what it's gonna look like on a large device, well, I can just drag this higher than what it is here and I can see what it's gonna look like on a large screen. Now I wanna show you the class manager from Advanced Themer. We do already have one from Bricks, but it's not quite as good and I'll give you a real world example as to why. I have a template here from Frames and I want to duplicate this template or this section and make my own variant of it while maintaining the old one. So I wanna make some changes to this one and maintain the Frames version. In order to do that, I have to duplicate all of the FR footer alpha classes and make my own classes of them. So to do this with the Bricks version, I can say FR footer alpha, let's find those classes. Let's just copy this so I have it. Let's select all of these and we're gonna go duplicate and we're gonna find the FR footer alpha and replace it with footer. So we have footer inner, footer nav, footer logo. The problem with this is that when I go and click duplicate, it's gonna duplicate the classes for me, but I have to now go back in here and manually add all the classes that I want to add to the element. Whereas if I do it with the advanced themer way, so we'll go to how we wanna duplicate, let's find FR footer alpha, let's find that in the string and replace it with footer. So here's all of the classes we're gonna remake. I want to assign the element, the classes to the same element, remove the old classes from the element and delete the old classes from the global class list. So we'll duplicate, we will check it out here. So now we have our footer class that's been applied. We have our footer content wrapper, our footer nav. So all the classes have been switched out and what's cool about this is that now I can say, okay, let's make some changes. So on this, let's add a terrible background color of red. And I want, here's my new version of this template, but I want the old version now too. So I'm gonna go templates. Let's type in footer alpha. Okay, and insert. And so now I have the original version without any changes being applied. We can see if our footer alpha is still there, nothing's been changed, and I can use the default frames template without altering it. I have my own copy here that I can use. To finish off the top bar, the next piece that I'm going to implement now in my builds is the advanced CSS. Now, I didn't use this before because it only allowed me to create and, and change the page CSS, global CSS, and add my own sheets. And I, and I typically use WP Codebox. Well, Maxime, the developer behind Advanced Themer, recently just implemented a WP Codebox integration so that now I can control, I can uh, turn on and off, I can change any of the information of my CSS files from WP Codebox. So if I go change, let's add a variable here of background color red. We'll save that. And if I go into WP Codebox, we can now see that it's been added. So I don't have to go open a new window, go to, go to WP Codebox and find it. I can now do it directly inside of Bricks. Really is gonna help my workflow immensely. Advanced CSS also gives us the option to see and add new recipes to our build. Now recipes are used inside the custom CSS area, and these are like a group or multiple lines of CSS. To give you an example, automatic CSS gives us one called list none, which removes the basing on a list. So we can see here, I have a list and there's some extra gap here. Well, what I can do in this CSS panel of my class here is go at list none 
and tab, and it's gonna add that group of CSS. I can make my own recipes here as well if I want to. So if I have a new one, let's go test, click enter, I can add in my own recipe here. The structure panel also has some really great tweaks and one of my favorite ones is the element shortcuts panel. And this allows me to quickly add elements to my structure. So typically how we'd build something, if let's rebuild this section right here, I have to go add section and inside the section, I want an image and a block next to it. And inside this block, we'll add in a heading, some basic text and a button. Well, with this over here, I can now just go section. I want an image, a block inside that block. I want a heading text and a button so I can build things out without having to open up any other panels. It's just all right here on the right hand side. And you have the ability to customize what elements you want to show in this panel. One of my absolute favorite tweaks is the ability to see in my structure panel if an item is styled by the ID or the class. And that's by these little bars on the right and left hand side. If there is a bar on the right, you can decide if you want red and blue or gray. But if it's a bar on the right, that's an ID styling. So I can see here, there's no classes, but there's an ID styling here. On this one, there's class styling. So I can quickly tell at a very you know, fast glance if I need to make adjustments. Usually I don't want things on ID styles. I want them on classes. So now I can see at a glance, I need to change and update the styling on this and move it to classes. Next up is a way to quickly tell what the HTML tags are of each element in your structure. So typically when I'm building something really fast, let's say a list, I will often forget to change it to a UL or an OL and add all the LI elements inside of it. And so I have to go to each item and go, okay, is this a, and a UL? It's not, okay, change it. Is this one an LI? Oh, okay, it's not. Change. I have to go to each individual item at a time. Well, with the toggle elements tag, I can now see exactly what HTML tag each item has, and I can know if I need to make adjustments from there. I don't have to go inside of each element individually. It saves a lot of time. As another layer to the structure panel, I've also got some new options that are added to the contextual menu when I right click on an element. One of these is the class converter. Now, if I want to add classes in bulk to a bunch of elements, I would typically have to go to each element, give this one a class, go to the next one, give it a class. Well, I can do it in bulk. Now there is the automatic CSS version of the BEM. However, if I style something at the ID level first and want to change it to a class, you can see, for instance, this one has a red bar, so it's on the ID and I go to styles. Well, this is all ID styling, but I want it to be a class now. With the, with the ACSS version, I can't change the ID styles to a class, but with the class converter that is in advanced themer, I can change, copy the ID styles to classes. So I can change those IDs to classes and also erase the ID styles from the element. So I can say, actually, I want this to be a test section. There's my test section container. There's my image wrapper. There's my image. This is gonna be my content, my heading. That's my text. I don't want the button included, so I'll remove that. And now I can add classes in bulk. And we'll see all the classes already added and we can tell all of the ID styling has been converted to a class instead. We've also got a really great option for component class manager. Now this goes hand in hand with the class manager that's a global instance. But if I wanna see only the classes that are in this section, let's say, I can click on this section and go component class manager, and it's gonna only show me the classes inside of that section. And then I can do a bulk edit from there. So it really just localizes the changes that you make to make sure you don't make it on a wider scale if you want to make some adjustments to classes. So I can say here, let's uh, let's change the test ones. Let's find test and change this to test two. Let's rename those classes, rename them. And we'll see here on my section, now I have test two section, test two container, test two image wrapper, all the classes are now changed on that section. Another great feature, I have this happen all the time. I Let's say I throw in a basic text element, which we'll have here, but I realize, you know what? That should have been a rich text element. So typically you'd have to go in here, add a new one. Let's move this to the right position. Let's take all this content, copy and paste it over. And it's just a process, right? Not very long, but it's a process. 
Well, with the convert option here, I can just change it to rich text. Now it's a rich text element. Actually, no, I want that to be a heading element. I can change everything with just one click. Now we're going back to rich and now I wanna go back to basic. So looking over at the classes and styles, the styling panel on the left-hand side, there's a few tweaks that I absolutely love using. The first one is the indicator of styles. And this one will tell me, let's say I'm over here, we can see, okay, I have some styling here on the, the class level, I can play with it. But let's say I was on the ID, I can now see exactly with this blue marker that there are class level changes that are being made. So I can say, okay, margin padding has class level changes. If I go here to the ID, I'll set the ID to 20 on the margin and I go to my class, I can now see I have ID level styling of 20. It just gives me a quick glance of like where some styling might be if I'm in the styling panel here. On top of this, I like to know where styling might be at different breakpoints. So let's say we go down to the tablet mode and I wanna change this on the class. I wanna change this to 30. Well, now we can see, oh, hey, there's some styling in our layout panel on desktop and on tablet portrait. So I can go back up to desktop, see what's being applied there. Okay, there's some margin being applied to the ID. I don't want that, let's remove it and let's go to the class. Okay, but on tablet mode, there's a margin on 30. So I can say, yeah, that's fine, let's leave it, or I can change it. And what's cool is we'll also get these dots at the top to indicate, hey, you have some styling on this selected element that's being applied to those breakpoints. So it really just gives you an overview of, of things that are being applied to your element in a whole. There's also this really cool feature where if I select an element, it'll automatically select a class for me. I get this a lot by default with bricks where I will select an element, it'll select the ID and I love styling in classes. So I might accidentally forget to select my class and I'll go and do my styling and find out later I never selected the class. Well, with this one little tweak, it's gonna automatically select the very first unlocked class that's available to it. And you can just go straight to styling, not worrying about if you're styling at the ID. First one on the elements list that I use all the time is the ability to add lorem ipsum text really easily. So I just added a text element here. I wanna add some text to it. So I just click the add dummy content and I can click on it as many times as I want. It'll add a new sentence. I want three sentences, there we go. And you have the option to choose lorem ipsum text or dummy content. You can decide which one you want to go with, but I like the readable content that doesn't look like lorem ipsum. So I chose that one. A really annoying thing that Bricks does is if I go and click on an element, it'll add a blue outline, which, okay, granted, I love to see where exactly I'm focused, but when I go to add a border, that blue outline stays put, so I can't really see the border I'm adding. However, with this tweak, when I click on border now, it disappears, so now I can actually see what exactly it is that I'm doing. I'll add one pixel solid, now we can see our border. Without it, you get that blue outline and you can't tell you even added a border in the first place. So it's just a nice quality of life tweak. If you've ever wanted to let's say, add a class to a piece of text, you usually have to go in here and you have to make it a span, we'll close this off, and then you have to manually add the class in here. So we'll go class equals text highlight. Let's close off that class where you had to type all of that out and make sure that it's, it's working correctly. Well, what's really cool is that you have this advanced text wrapper feature. I'm just gonna unwrap this for a second. I can choose to wrap things however I want. So I wanna, let's say I wanna create a span and I want to add a class tag of what's already in here, text highlight, I want that class. So I'm gonna select my text and click wrap. And so now I have that text wrapped. If I don't want it anymore, I just highlight it and click unwrapped and it unwraps it for me. Or if you want to have a span and add a style, so we'll just say, um, background or no color red. I want to add that style to it. Let's find our text and wrap it. Now we have a color red for that element. There's a span with the style color red. I didn't have to go type out anything. It just did it for me. Speaking of text, usually whenever you add a basic text element, it will add as a div and you'll forget to go back and change it to a paragraph. Well, there's a really cool one, a really cool tweak that allows you to change the basic text to automatically be set to a paragraph by default, which just saves your life so many times. Last on our list is the ability to build out grids visually. So I have a bento grid that I want to build out here, 
And I don't want to have to do this with just manually coding. I want to see what I'm actually doing. And so what we can do here is I can actually go to my container element that holds my items. We're going to change this to a grid and I get a new option of grid builder and I can visually build this out. So let's break down my bento grid real quick and figure out how many columns and rows I need. So let's grab a line here and let's just mark out all of my lines. So we have our top box, our bottom, we have a line here and a line there and that's it. Okay, now let's do our columns. So we have a line here, a line there, a line here and a line there. Okay, so there is our columns in our rows. So we have one, two, three columns. So we're going to just put three in here. In rows, we have one, two, three rows. So let's put rows. So now we can see, okay, this does not look anything like the design. We have how many, a large column, a smaller column, and then a little bit of a bigger column. So let's keep this one FR here. We're going to change this one to be small. So let's say this can be 0.2 FR. And this one we can change to be like 0.6 FR. I think that's going to look pretty good as far as our columns go. I think it's going to work. So we'll leave that. And then we need to do our rows. So we have, let's see, one really large row here and then two equally sized rows here. So we can do one FR at the top, but we can make these smaller. So equal sizes. Let's just do 0 0.5 for right now and 0 0.5 on the bottom. Now we can see, you know what? Let's make this just a little bit larger than the other ones. Uh, let's try 1.4. I think that's a little bit better. That's looking nicer. Now we can actually decide how we want these elements to exist. So my first child, I want this to expand those two items. My second one is gonna be perfect there. Let's take a look here. That's how we want it, okay. Let's actually make this a little bit smaller too. I want this to be like, 0.4, that's better, okay. Our third child will exist, it looks like in these two columns here. So all I'm gonna do is span that out. And then these ones are gonna span these two columns. Okay, here's our gap. I'm gonna do a var grid gap for my gapping. And we're gonna go apply grid and close. This is going to put all the grid styling as CSS in here. So I can save, view on front end, and now we can see I have my grid laid out, just how I have it in the design here. Advanced Themer also gives us a contextual menu for our classes. So this gives us a couple different options. I'm not gonna go through every single one, just the ones that I use all the time. One of them is like import ID styles to class. So any of the ID styles I can import into the selected class. Usually how you'd have to do this is click in here, then go copy styles from the ID, paste them into the class and then reset. But this is just a one click setting. You can also, let's say you're at the ID level, you can import ID styles to class and then make a new class like card new and we'll save. I don't actually need this class anymore and I'll use this a lot too. It's just the contextual menu, move class to trash, or I'll say, hey, you know what? I wanna duplicate just this class alone and I can do that with clone class. So now I have card new. Now I have my class and its styles cloned. So we'll go to styles here. We can see we have those exact, exact same styles on this new class. And those are the features I use in every single site build. There's a ton of other ones I haven't mentioned. I don't use those ones, but there's a ton of others. I recommend you go check them out. They might be helpful to you, but if you're starting simple, start here. These are going to help not only your speed time, but your error correction, catching errors and making sure everything is dialed in. It's going to help a lot. So use these features. I hope you guys found this video helpful. If you did, please give it a like. It helps my channel. Give me a comment. I am curious to know. Do you like the code pen converter feature? I haven't really used it. I don't see a use case for myself, but do you guys use it? Do you guys find it helpful? Let me know. I'd be curious to, to hear that. And uh, until then, I'll see you guys in the next video.